Hello and welcome to the workshop. On this video I'm going to be making a replacement pinion for this clock I made four years ago. Uh, what happened was one of the pins came loose and I put a bit of glue on it and it made a bit of a mess. So I thought I'd be meaning to do it for a couple of years now. But because I'm going to be stripping the clock down, repolishing it, oil it, I thought this is a good opportunity to, to make a new pinion. So I'm going to do that. I'll strip the clock down and I'll show you what I mean. Alright, now that the clock's stripped down I can show you the lantern pinion I'm going to be making. And you can also see the excess glue that made a bit of a mess. So it was only a temporary fix. I've been meaning to do it for a while. So what I'm going to do, we'll make a new one of those and we'll see how it looks from there. Right, here's the centre wheel pinion bobby I'm going to be making. I'm going to make one of these and I'm going to have to make another centre harbour because the other one was glued on. Right, now I'm going to start by turning a piece of brass. to drill and drill. Now I can take this over to the milling machine. Now that I've got it in the mill I can drill the holes now.
Right, now they're drilled, ready to put it back in the lathe now. Right, now I'm going to finish the turning. Right, that's the turning complete so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the pins in and then I'll bring you back right that's it with the pins in they are quite fiddly these if I put a rule up against it you can see the size but it's not the smallest on this clock I've got another one here let's put that against it uh, got two of those small ones in this clock right I'll put the uh, wheel on and then we'll have a look at that Right, so here's the finished bobbin pin in, ready to go back in the clock now. Right, I put the new pin in, in the clock now and everything's working fine. You can see it here. This is a John Wilding's Elegant Score Clock and it runs for eight days on a full wind and it rings the bell on the hour. This clock's got some interesting features like a maintaining detent which is connected to the fusee and on the other end of the fusee is the stop work mechanism. Not all clocks have a fusee like this other clock I'm making. The great wheel on this clock is connected to the barrel and spring directly and is known as a going barrel. Here's another fusee I made. The spring in this clock when fully wound generates seven pound of torque. The purpose of this fusee is to even out the torque as it unwinds. It's a bit like a clock gearbox. Some people prefer to use, as in here, a piece of gut for the cable or you can use brass like I did or you can use a chain. If anyone's wondering how I managed to make this fusee this is how I did it. I made myself another tool post and the idea is once you've turned the radius you set the tool on here and you set your pitch like you would normal cutting a normal screw thread and as it goes around you're pushing down like that when you get to the end you stop it you wind back allow for backlash come back to your starting position and take another cut just as you would with normal screw cutting go back like that On this clock it's got a clever stop work mechanism. What happens is the cable as it, un as it winds down the fusee touches this fusee iron which in turn hits against this stop here. So I'll wind the clock and let's see if we can see it.
There you are. Let's come to a full stop now. Can't overwind the clock. Right, the clock's finished now. It's ready to go back in the house. If you like seeing things like this being made, please subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video.